Okay, what is the first question? <clears throat> the first question is, what are we going to do in new heaven or in eternity? Okay, actually, uh, Bible does not give a clear description about what are the activities in heaven or in eternity. You know, some people think that we will be uh, singing songs and praising God always in heaven uh, and all other things are there. But at the same time, I believe there will be more activities to do in heaven. There will be more activities to do in heaven. I think it's a, it's a kind of secret for us now. You know, we do not know what are the all things that we are going to do in heaven, but surely we will be doing or we will be having some kind of activities in heaven or in eternity. The first thing, as uh, Aksa mentioned, that is worshiping God. Okay, worshiping God. That means in Revelation chapter 5, verse 13, and also in Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 11, you know, you can say that, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a great multitude of people in white robes, they, and they are worshiping God. They are singing uh, to God. Okay, let's read that maybe uh, chapter 5, verse 30. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor and glory and, glory and mighty forever and ever. Okay, again in uh, Revelation chapter 7, verses 9 to 11. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the lamb. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worship the God. Okay, so worshiping God. So that must be the, uh, the, the, the uh, I mean, important thing that we are going to do in heaven. Uh, especially in these passages, uh, we read that. Uh, there is a great multitude in white drops from every nation, all tribes and all peoples and all tongues singing salvation belongs to God, our Lord, okay, who is sitting on the throne and to the Lamb. That means, you know, all over, from all over the world, from all the tribes and from all the uh, people and all the, um, uh, all the tongues and all the uh, religion and every from every 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 group of people every nation there will be many people or multitude of people gathering together in heaven and they are going to worship God so this must be the main thing that we are going to do that that's why you know some people are always saying that okay our worship here on this earth is uh, is a is a preparation for worshiping in heaven so we are preparing now and we are practicing now how to worship in in heaven. I would not know, I mean, how we are going to worship in heaven. Um, that means, you know, always worshiping God or nothing. But we, we have no idea about that. I mean, more ideas. But at the same time, in Revelation chapter 19, verse 9, you can see there as a, as a there is a celebration happening. There is a celebration uh, along with the, uh, the uh, marriage of uh, the Lamb or the bride and the bridegroom, okay? So in, in, in Revelation chapter 19, verse nine, yeah, we'll read that verse. And the angel said to me, write this, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Okay, so there is, there is a celebration which is happening in heaven, okay? So there will be celebration, surely. And one more thing is there, in Revelation chapter 22, verse three, 22, verse three. Yes. No longer will there be any, no longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. And his servants will worship him. So some say that okay, the these servants are the, the angels, but we do not know who are these uh, I mean servants, but we can believe that we will be the servants of God, and we, we all will be serving God, and we all will be worshiping God. And we all will be celebrating uh, the, the salvation that we received from through Jesus Christ in heaven. So this is going to happen in heaven. At the same time, we do not, we do not have much information about what we are going to do in uh, heaven 
and when we reach there. Okay, we will come to the um, uh, second question. The second question was, um, what are the different offices or positions of Jesus in various appearances? We know that Jesus was appearing in different places and different in different places means different times and um, revealing himself. So Jesus was revealing himself uh, to the world in different ways. You know, whenever he was revealing himself, he was having a position or he was having an office. And according to that office or according to that position, he was acting. So he, he was doing everything according to that position. First of all, in his first coming, when he was, uh, I mean, coming first, okay, it was as a savior and as a redeemer to save the sinners. That means Jesus was uh, incarnated in the form of a human. So Jesus was incarnated in the form of a human. Okay, so that is what we read that in his first coming, he was coming as a savior or as a redeemer okay, to save the sin, sin, sinful people and incarnated in the form of a human. Okay, but at present, who is this? And at present, what is the, what is the ministry of Jesus or what is the office of Jesus? That's what we heard from um, yeah, uh, Cedric and uh, Guido and uh, Maria Mandi and all those people. Okay, so we heard that um, Jesus at present, he's, uh, he's a mediator, okay? He's a mediator to intercede for his people now sitting at the right hand of father. Even when Jesus was um, I mean, in his public ministry on this earth, he was doing the same ministry as a, as a priest, as a high priest, he was doing that ministry and he was a prophet and he was mediating or, I mean, he was working as a mediator to inter intercede for the, for the people of God. Now at present, he is sitting at the right hand of father. Okay, right hand of father sitting there and um, interceding for the people of God. At the same time, the next thing, in the first phase of his second coming, in the first phase of his second coming, we know that the second coming has two phases. The first one that Jesus will be coming to the midair. So that is the first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, and in that phase, the first phase, he will be coming as a bridegroom to take his bride as a bridegroom to take his bride okay oru oru manavaatiye swigarikkan varuna oru manavaalane pole aanu evide varunathe madhya aakashathil kartava yesu christu varunathe nammal oru malayalam paattu paadarundallo endana avan kaandana avan rajavaayi vaanil velippedumbol pakshe satyam parnal avan rajavaayi alla vaanil velippedunathu aa velippedal ennu parayunathu endayirikkum avan kaandanaayi vaanil velippedumbol so that means that will be as a as a bridegroom to take his bride, take his bride, okay, uh, in in midair. And the next thing is, in between the first and second phase of his second coming. Listen, in between the first and the second phase of his second coming, he will be coming as a judge and a rewarder of believers in heaven. He will be a judge and a rewarder of believers in heaven. That's what we were discussing or what I was preaching uh, the, the previous two weeks, okay? So the rewarding ceremony of the believers in heaven, that means Jesus will be the judge for the believers and he will be judging the believers and I mean, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, giving or uh, providing the, the rewards or the awards or the, the crowns for the, believers those who are in heaven so in between the first and second phase of his second coming he will be as a judge and a rewarder of believers in heaven and next thing is in the second phase of his second coming in the second phase of his second coming he will be as a king and also as a judge that means after the great tribulation in the second phase of his second coming what is that? As a king and as a judge. That means after the great tribulation, there will be a judgment. There will be a judgment that is going to happen. I mean, in the second phase of his second coming. Okay. And then again, in the millennial kingdom, 
in the millennial kingdom. The, the, all the other things that you have said is absolutely right. You know, he's a piece of, I mean, prince of peace, or he's a prophet, or he's a, he's a high priest. Everything is right. Everything is right. And in, in the beginning, he was a creator, right? In the beginning, he was a creator. Okay, so everything is right. At the same time, I was just I mean, uh, uh, making a division between uh, his appearances or his revelation. Okay, so here it comes like this in the second uh, phase of his, uh, uh, sorry, as a, uh, uh, in, the, in the millennial kingdom, he will be as a, as a supreme ruler over the millennial kingdom. And also at the end of the millennial kingdom, at the end of the millennial kingdom, that is what we are reading in chapter 20, yeah, chapter 20, uh, uh, verses 11 onwards, that you can see there that at the end of the millennial kingdom, again, Jesus will be as a judge to do the final judgment, to do the final judgment. The, the final judgment means this judgment is for everyone, those who are in this world, okay? The, the people, those who are already died and the, uh, the people, those who are already living, you know, all those people, all the wicked people, all the unbelievers will be judged by Jesus Christ. And we also will be with Jesus in that judgment, okay? With Jesus ruling or judging the, the wicked people. So at the end of the millennial kingdom, Jesus is going to be as a, as a judge to do the final judgment. And again, in the eternity, this is very important. In the eternity, who will be Jesus? Jesus will be the everlasting Emmanuel, the everlasting Emmanuel. That means the word Emmanuel means God with us. Emmanuel means God with us. That's what we read in, in Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, and also Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, that we read there, Jesus is the Emmanuel. And before his birth, before the birth of Jesus, his name was given that Jesus will be called as the Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us, God with us. That's the same thing that we are reading in Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. It says that, and I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is among men and he will dwell among them. And they shall be his people and God himself will be among them. That means... So the tabernacle of God is among the people and he will dwell among them and they shall be his people and God himself will be among them. That means forever and ever we will be with Jesus and Jesus will be with us. That's the reason it is, it is called as the everlasting Emmanuel. In the eternity, Jesus will be with us forever and ever. So that's what we read that he will be called as the Emmanuel in a right way. I mean, during the time of the eternity. Now also he is Emmanuel and he is with us. His, his presence is with us at the same time. Physically, Jesus will be with us in eternity forever and ever. So we will I mean, be I mean, uh, thinking about the third question. The third question was, the third question was, how did Enoch and Elijah enter heaven since Bible says, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. So the, the third question is a little bit confused or a little bit complicated to understand. It's not easy to understand because you now we have, uh, we don't have uh, enough um, proofs or enough uh, uh, evidences from the Bible uh, to, to prove these things. But we are getting an idea from uh, some of the uh, other verses that we will um, and come to a conclusion for that, okay? And, uh, you know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50, we read that um, um, uh, the, the, the flesh and the blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Then the question is, then how uh, Enoch and Elijah entered heaven since Bible says it? And at the same time, when we go to Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24, we read that Enoch, Walk with God and was disappeared for God took him, right? Enoch walked with God and was disappeared because God took him. But the same thing is written in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 also. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse, verse 5, uh, it, is, it is written differently. That means a slight difference is there. It says that Enoch was taken up without death. 
Enoch was taken up without death. That means disappeared. Disappeared in, in Genesis chapter 5, verse 24. Disappeared. Disappeared means to anywhere he is disappeared. But in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5, it very clearly says that Enoch was taken up without death. That means he did not die. It is very clear, clearly written that he is not died. But again, about Elijah, about Elijah, we are reading about him in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. We'll read that verse. 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. Um, you ready, Elsa? Yeah. yeah. As And as they still went on and talked, behold, chariots of fire and horses, and fire separated the two of them, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Okay. Again, there also it is written, Elijah went up. Elijah went up by the whirlwind into heaven. So that very clearly says that he went to heaven. Okay. Elijah went to heaven. But about Enoch, it is not clearly written that he went to heaven, but it is written he went up. He went up. Okay. He was taken up. Okay. Whatever it may be. So the question is, where are they now? Or in what kind of body they are? Where are they now? Or in what kind of body they are? Because they are not dead. Okay. They were taken alive. They were taken alive huh? up to heaven or somewhere else. Okay. Now, where are they now and in what kind of body they are? You know, when you read the Gospels, uh, especially Matthew, Matthew chapter 17, verses 2 and 3. Okay, Matthew chapter 17, verses 2 and 3 says, you know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mount of transfiguration. We know that, uh, I mean, that, uh, I mean, uh, incident which is happening there. So on the, on the mount of transfiguration, we can see Peter, James and John. Peter, James, and John, they saw that Elijah and Moses, okay, they were talking with Jesus, right? Elijah and Moses, they were talking with Jesus. That means one person was translated and one person was died. Okay, Elijah was translated. Translated means he was taken up, okay, without death. Okay, Elijah. Okay, and but Moses died. Moses died. Okay, we can assume that. Uh, from from this portion that they, they were recognizable and they were in a bodily present uh, in some form. Okay? We we cannot say that okay, what was the the, the the structure of the body or um, in what body that they were um, uh, appearing or I mean uh, talking to Jesus. But we know that they had a body. At the same time, Peter, James, and John they were seeing that Elijah and Moses. Okay? And they are talking with Jesus. Okay, So again, in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, um, it says that, you know, and just as it is appointed for a man to die first, okay, and after that comes judgment. Okay, So once a person, a, a man should die once, then after that, the judgment is coming. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. But we know that these people did not die. These people did not die. Then how they entered into heaven. How they were taken into heaven. Okay, Since they are not died, they don't have a resurrection. Right? Since they are not died, they don't have a resurrection. Okay, Only the resurrection is coming for the people, those who are died. But these people, especially, you know, and Elijah, they did not die. Then they don't have resurrection. How can a man go to heaven without death or without resurrection? How can a man go to heaven without death and without resurrection? You know, uh, the, the biblical uh, term which is used for this uh, I mean, procedure, the special procedure, that means that Enoch was taken up and Elijah was taken to heaven, uh, all those procedures, you know, especially in the, the term which is used in the Bible is translated. Okay, in some some other uh, um, some other uh, translations or some other versions, Bible versions, it is written translated. That means, you know, Maria Mandi was saying they were transformed. 
they were transformed so that could be that could be the the right word that the translation could be the right word okay uh, the translation means in the biblical term it means uh, taken taken away in a in another manner taken away in another manner that is the meaning of translated body okay so that means um, by faith enoch was taken up without death or in in you know in some some kind of paraphrased uh, i mean versions are there in that paraphrased version it is it is said that enoch was translated enoch was translated that means it is believed that enoch could have received a glorified body or translated body to go to heaven okay and at present you know there are many things that, that we have to uh, um, uh, understand from that portion because uh, in hebrews chapter um, to 11 we are reading about enoch right in hebrews chapter 11 verse uh, uh, 11 verse yeah we we read already that verse maybe um, 5 right so but at the same time you know there are some people saying um, enoch uh, died enoch died and went to heaven okay enoch died and went to heaven but the reason for that is uh, verse verse 13 no? All these died in faith without receiving the promises, but having seen them and having welcomed them for a distance and having confessed that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For those who say such things made it clear that they are seeking a country their own. And um, before that, there is. Yeah, which is that verse? Maybe Malayalathile. Ever, ever, all of them. Back to the Murthy Pravikya. The other one, that one. Abhi, none of them. Bumil, Tangal, and Nirum, Paradeshigal. And then, each one, one. Vishwasa, till Marichu. And the verse thirteen. That means they died. I mean, you know, in in verse thirteen, it is written they died. Okay, by faith they died. Okay, so that's the reason that some people are saying that okay, they died and went to heaven. Hmm? That, we, but we cannot. I mean, we cannot just. I mean, uh, really believe that because. When it is very clearly says that they were taken to heaven without death, without death. Okay. And we read in Revelation chapter 11 about uh, two witnesses. They are coming uh, from heaven and they will be prophesying for 1260 days. Okay. Chapter 11 of uh, 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 Revelation. Chapter 11 of uh, Revelation, that whole chapter is uh, talking about that. We are going to, we are not going to that portion now. And in Revelation chapter 11, uh, you can see that um, uh, uh, two witnesses are coming. Two witnesses are coming um, and uh, uh, they are coming from heaven. They are coming from heaven and they will prophesy for 1260 days, 1260 days uh, during the time of the tribulation. And they have, it is written that they have the power to do the miracles. They have power to do the miracles. And that means very clearly it is written, they have the power uh, to, to shut the heaven so that no rain falls in the days of their prophecy and they have power over waters to turn them to blood and to strike the earth with all plagues and often as they desire. That means the witnesses, those who are coming down from heaven, they have the power. They have the power to do the miracles. Okay, Then after doing that miracles, we read there in chapter 11, uh, Revelation chapter 11, we read there, then the beast will make war against them. Okay, that means overcome them. Okay, the beast or the Antichrist will make a war against these people, these witnesses, and they will overcome these witnesses and they will kill them. That means the beast will kill them. That means these um, witnesses are supposed to be killed during the time of the great tribulation. During the time of the great tribulation, these witnesses are supposed to be killed. Okay, and again we read that, and their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city for three and a half days. Right? There, um, what is that? Which is that uh, verse? Verse eight, eleven, verse eight. Verse eight. And their dead bodies will be lie in the street of the great city, which mystically is called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. 
Okay, so their dead bodies will be there lying in the street of the great city for three and a half days. And it says that, and all the people will see their dead body for three and a half days because they will not allow their dead bodies to be buried. Okay, so the people will not allow them to bury. So that's the reason that all the people can see their dead body in the in the street. Okay, and after the three and a half days, the, we read that the breath of life, the breath of life from God will enter into them, and they will stand on their feet, and they will hear a loud voice from heaven saying that come up here, and they will ascend to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies will see their ascension. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. But the problem is, is it, is it um, Enoch and Moses or Enoch and Elijah or Elijah or Moses? There are, there are different, different opinions about that, but we'll come to that point. No, anyway, this is going to happen. You know, these two witnesses will come down from heaven and they will do the miracles and the beast will fight against them. And later, these witnesses will die and their dead body will be there on the street for three and a half days. And three after the three and a half days, they will rise up from the, from the death and they will hear that loud voice from heaven that come up here. Okay? And then they will ascend to heaven. Okay? It, it will be happening in a cloud and the enemies will see their ascension. Okay? So there are many interpretation on, on these two witnesses. You know, but mainly there are two among the Bible scholars. First of all, some says that some scholars says that either it is going to be the Enoch and Elijah, or the second opinion is Moses and Elijah. Okay, either Enoch and Elijah or Moses and Elijah. Hmm? We know that uh, Enoch and Elijah were taken to heaven without death. Hmm? But what about Moses? What about Moses? Any idea about that Moses died or not? Moses died or not? <clears throat> I think Moses died and God buried him. Yes, very correct. Now, Moses died. Okay. Moses died, but I mean, where he died, where he died, and where he was buried? In the land of? Um, yes, that, that particular, the, 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 that area is known as the land of Moab. Okay, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 34, Deuteronomy chapter 34, it is written, in the land of Moab, uh, Moses was died, and it is written that he died and was buried. But who buried Moses? God himself, right? God himself buried Moses. Okay, it is very clearly written there. You know, we do not know, I mean, where the exact place, but we know that it was in the land of Moab that he died and he was buried, that he buried by God himself. You know? So that's the reason that some believe since Enoch and Elijah are in heaven, without death, they must die once again. So they are going to come again as witnesses and will die then, I mean, they will resurrect. Okay? But some other people believe that it's, it's Moses and Elijah going to come. But one thing is very sure, it is not impossible for God to keep Enoch and Elijah bodily with him in heaven until their final ministry is not yet fulfilled. So they have one more ministry. That's what uh, Gidu was sharing about that question that they, their, their ministry is not fulfilled yet. Okay, So they have some more ministry. Maybe Moses and Elijah or Enoch and Elijah will be coming uh, to the earth during the time of the great tribulation. We are going to the fourth question and that is the important one, important one, okay? The fourth question was, what is your understanding about the New Jerusalem city? What is your understanding about the New Jerusalem city? Some of you were, uh, yeah, Justin was uh, saying something that uh, uh, this is the place for the, the, the eternal place for the um, uh, Christians. That's right. Okay. This is the eternal place for the Christians or for the, for the believers or the people of God or the children of God. Okay. Anyway, we'll come to that point. You know, there are many opinions among the Bible scholars also about this new Jerusalem city, but none of them have a proper evidence. Okay? None of them have a proper evidence to prove their view. 
Now, some people say that it's, it's going to be a, a, a literal city. It's going to be a literal city, but some say that it's going to be a spiritual city and um, uh, uh, look at it as, a, as an eternal state of believer. Um, you know, there are many opinions about that. You know, some people say that, okay, uh, this is a literal city that is that is going to go to coming down from heaven on this earth. Okay, at the same, but there are some other, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, questions to argue that. Okay, but at the same time, some there are people say that, okay, it's a spiritual city. You know, it's just a I man spiritually saying, allegorically saying that a, a Jerusalem, a city is coming down from heaven. That's a spiritual meaning only. Some people say that. But personally, I believe it will be an actual material city with a spiritual significance. Okay? It's going to be the, the New Jerusalem city is going to be an actual material city with a spiritual significance. Because in chapter 21, I mean, as uh, Jay's sister said, you know, many things are written, you know, which is going to happen literally, which is going to happen in uh, chapter 21. Okay, so we can believe that it's going to be an actual material city with a spiritual significance. And I mean, uh, there are some reasons for that also. We will study uh, those portions as uh, we are moving uh, on. Now, we will study about the, the New Jerusalem city, Revelation chapter 21 verses 2 to 27. Okay, Revelation chapter 21, verses 2 to 27, um, tells us a very clear description about what is going to be the new Jerusalem city. New Jerusalem city. <clears throat> okay, so um, as we, the children of God, um, are waiting for the new Jerusalem city, um, we think. Let us think that about you no know, uh, about this. There, there are there are importance for uh, a present Jerusalem in Bible. Okay, so we are going to study about the New Jerusalem city, which is going to be coming down from heaven. At the same time, we should know something about the present Jerusalem city in Bible and what is the importance of the present city of Jerusalem in Bible, or is it significant to know that? Many things are mentioned in the Bible about Jerusalem or about Israel or some other I mean, nations. Okay, is there anything mentioned about Russia in Bible? Is there anything mentioned about Russia in Bible? For sure, about Israel, about Jerusalem, everything is written. But about Russia, anything is written there in Bible? No. Uh, so <clears throat> in Ezekiel 38, mm -hmm. um, that's why my mom's saying it's talking about Russia. Okay, okay, yes. We'll come to that point. Yeah, okay. You know, in our present situation, that's right, uh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So in our present situation, um, studying about a new Jerusalem city is very much important. It's very much important because, you know, now almost all the nations are shaking, right? Almost all the nations are shaking. They are losing their foundations and they cannot stand without uh, the support of some other self-sufficient uh, countries. You know, all the nations are shaking now. They do not know what to do. And we know the present situation of various nations or the other countries. It shows something that seriously something is going to happen in the upcoming days. Okay, serious 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 that shows very seriously something is going to happen for this earth and for this world. Okay, you know, there are problems and wars between the battle between the nations are in hike nowadays, right? And you know, we know that all the other nations today are they are focusing the present Jerusalem or Israel. All other nations are focusing Jerusalem or Israel, and they are fighting at Israel, even though geographically it is a it is a small country. Okay, so it says uh, somebody was saying that okay, Israel or Jerusalem is a is a is a country, or Israel is a country, um, and uh, uh, smaller than smaller than the, the state of Kerala. Okay, so geographically, uh, Israel is a small country. But at the same time, you know why these old nations are focusing Israel and all they're trying to fight against Israel or Jerusalem to capture Israel or capture Jerusalem. 
okay we know the current situation is very bad the current situation the current war between russia and ukraine it is happening now you know we know that i think uh, today is the uh, 31st or 32nd day of the war okay so it is continuing continuing 31st or 32nd day today the russia and the um, ukraine okay so still russia and all other european countries are in confusion okay we know that our president joe biden is in poland or he is in european countries now to discuss the future things okay the nations are shaking and they are i mean fighting each other without a proper cause they do not have a proper cause but they are fighting every nations are fighting you know president joe biden meeting with the nato the alliance and to discuss about the russia's invasion and uh, discussing with the what is that the G, g7 countries and all and india india now supports russia for many reasons hmm? we do not know what is going to happen with india as it stands with russia in the coming days okay we know that number of ukrainian refugees are increasing day by day i i i heard from the news that us is welcoming uh, 100000 um, uh, ukrainian uh, refugees now okay welcoming no us is welcoming 100000 i mean ukrainian uh, 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 refugees we know that always the european union and the soviet union are in enmity and you know sometimes the political the investigators are saying that there are possibilities for third world war also I mean think about israel israel is sending their missiles in iran now okay and pakistan pakistan is in trouble at present what is happening in pakistan we know that it is in in economic crisis is there and their army are insisting prime minister imran khan to step down from the position so pakistan is in crisis and sri lanka what is happening there okay is in in, in a big economic crisis now people in sri lanka struggling without food without gas without electricity without hospital facilities or because of many reasons there are many reasons for that sri lanka okay and they are they are asking support from india now sri lanka is asking support from india and about china you know the covid again the spreading and in many other countries also it is spreading you know we know the richest countries are there they are still confused about many things they do not know what to do when we all are praying earnestly to stop all these situations and all the wars and everything when let there be peace among the nations we are praying for that we are praying for that but we do not know exactly know what is going to happen in future and what would be the end of all these things and all these the consequences of all these things but we know one thing even if the present jerusalem is collapsed or destroyed that will not affect the children of god right because we are hoping for a new jerusalem and that's a city to be established and that will happen no sooner hallelujah amen so that is what our expectation we are expecting that from the lord and that is going to come down from heaven to the earth and we will be there forever and ever okay so we are not expecting any 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 present jerusalem but we are expecting the upcoming jerusalem the new jerusalem city okay so you have any so i was asking that any idea about uh, something is written in in bible about russia okay so it is clearly said that it is written about russia in a different name in uh, ezekiel chapter 38 uh, 38 and 39 also uh, in ezekiel chapter 38 and 39 we can read about uh, uh what is russia okay and uh, can you take that verse maybe maybe read that uh, maybe one verse 38 verse 1 it's a ezekiel chapter 38 verse 1 anyone can read if you have taken and the word of the lord came to me saying son of man set your face towards gog of the land of magog the prince of rosh meshech and tubal and prophesy against him okay so in 38 and 39 we read the, the headings you can see there the prophecy against gog and uh, a prophecy against gog and all those things especially in 38 verse 1 we are reading about a war about a war it is known as the gog magog war 
right? Gok, Magok, War. We already studied about that in Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 and 8. Right? In Revelation chapter 20, verses 7 and 8 also, we can see a war. There is a war. There is a fight. Okay, That, that, that fight or that war is known as the Gog Magog War. Okay, So the same war is in, in Revelation and also in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. Okay, So in these chapters, there are many places names are mentioned there. Okay, Especially the Bible scholars are according to, you know, according to the, the geographical history, they believe that the names given in these verses are the ancient names. And they give the modern names for those places now. Okay, Especially think about those uh, names which is written there. You know, in uh, uh, verse 1 itself, it, it says that, um, yeah, yeah, in, 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 in verse, verse 3. Yeah, no, no, verse 2. Verse 2, you can see Rosh, right? Now, if you want to write down, you know, uh, there is no screen uh, screen sharing for that. I didn't make the PowerPoint for that, but you can write it down. Okay, so you don't look into the 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 Bible, but you you can write it down. Okay, when I am saying so, the the Rosh, the name Rosh, the place Rosh is there, right? Uh, in in verse two, that is Russia. Okay, the Rosh, that is the ancient name of Russia. The present name is Russia, but Rosh is the ancient name. That means the place where Noah's grandchildren were living after the flood, okay? So the Rosh is the place where the Noah's grandchildren, the Noah's grandchildren, they were living after the flood. And the second place written there is Meshach, right? Meshach, that is Moscow. Meshach is Moscow. I was just telling you, I mean, what is the, what is the connection between the current situation of some other countries and uh, you no know, everything is written in bible so that's what I'm, I'm, i was just trying to tell you, you no know, uh, meshek is is moscow that also is the place where noah's uh, grandchildren they were living there okay and the third third i mean place name is tubal okay tubal tubal is the siberia tubal is the siberia that also is the place where noah's grandchildren were living Noah's grandchildren were living. So this history is there in the in the in the uh, book of uh, uh, Genesis and all other. Sorry, in the book of I um, mean uh, uh, numbers and everywhere. Okay. So the next point is uh, the name is the Prince of Rosh. The Prince of Rosh is the 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 I mean uh, Russia's belief system is atheism, right? Atheism is the uh, you know, the atheism of Russia, the people in, in Russia, they are atheist. They don't believe in God or communism is there, communism. So that is the Prince of Rosh, the Prince of Rosh, okay? And again, Persia is there in verse, uh, um, in verse five. In verse five, uh, Persia is there. Persia is the Persians, that means the present Iran. The present Iran is, Persia. Present Iran is Persia in verse 5. And in same verse, there is a word Kush. Okay. And the Kana Parsigal, Kushir, Putir, Gomer. Okay. So Kush is Ethiopia. In some other translation, it is not Kush, but it is originally Ethiopia is written there. Okay. That means the African continent. The African continent is known as the Ethiopia. And in some other translation, it is written Kush. Okay. And the other word, the place name is Put. Malartil Put no? P U T, P U T, Put. It is Libya. That means the Northern Africa. Libya, Northern Africa. And again, Gomer. Gomer is the other next place. That is the, uh, and especially Gomer and armies of uh, Beth Chogarma. Uh, Gomer and armies of Beto Togarma means Germany. Germany. Geographically, these are the present or the current names, which is the modern names which is given for the places or the countries. Okay, especially when you read these verses, maybe uh, verse 15, the following verses and all, you know, you can see that mighty army with all these nations will come against Israel or Jerusalem, which means. We feel sometimes, oh, um, one country is fighting against another country. 
uh, but it's not actually like that. You know, sometimes you are thinking, okay, one country is fighting against another country. Okay, but it is not like that. You know, it is it is just like you know there will be a group of nation with each other country to support them always. This is what very clearly written in chapter thirty eight and thirty nine. There will be a group of people, group of nations coming together and supporting one country, and that is actually that is happening now. You know, when one country is in trouble, when con one country is trouble, you know, there are many countries, many many other nations. They are supporting them, and especially in uh, verses eighteen through. Uh, yeah, 15, 18, and 23, and all those verses of Ezekiel chapter 38, you will understand, you know, the events which is taking place along with this war, okay? So Gog, Magog war. So the thing is, many things are mentioned in the Bible about various nations, especially about Jerusalem, okay? Now, about Russia also, but our concern is not what happens to the present Jerusalem or present Russia, let it be anything happening around us. Let it be anything happen, I mean, happening around us. But do not be worried about all those things. I mean, just pray for the suffering people to know that Jesus and we are looking forward for the new Jerusalem. I mean, especially when we are reading about I mean, Revelation chapter 21, verse 2. Revelation chapter 21, verse 2, we read, New Jerusalem is coming down from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband, right? as a bride adorned for her husband. That means in verse one, the new heavens and new earth are said to be, to be the created after dissolving the present year. And present heavens are coming. But in verse two, we read that new Jerusalem comes down from heaven. And it seems that the heavenly Jerusalem was in existence already in heaven. Okay, we know the present earthly Jerusalem is pictured as a harlot or a prostitute in different verses in Bible. Because many times we see that the people of Israel forsaking God and they are going back from, I mean, uh, uh, I mean from God and I mean, worshiping the pagan gods and idolatry. That's the reason God said, Jerusalem, or people of Israel, I mean, you are compromising with the world and worldly things. So you cannot be, cannot be as my people or my bride. But here in this verse two, we read that no, New Jerusalem is coming down from heaven as a bride, as a bride, holy and adorned for her husband. The New Testament church is there. No, the true believers are coming down. The saints of God are coming down who are washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and, and, and who are already with Jesus in heaven coming down as an adorned bride. Especially we know that in John chapter 14 verses 2 and 3. But it's at John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3, it is very clearly written that Jesus said, when in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. And right? No, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. When if it was not there, I would have told you because I'm going there to prepare a place for you prepare a place for you. So this new Jerusalem is made by God, not on this present earth, but in heaven itself. And he is bringing that beautiful city or Jesus is calling it as the father's house from heaven to the new year. Specifically here, Jesus said that there are many dwelling places and mentions. And so the Old Testament believers or fathers had expectation about this beautiful city. It is very clearly written there in Hebrews, okay? In Hebrews chapter 11, verses uh, 9 and 10, we read that Abraham, okay? Abraham, 11, verse 9, it is very clearly says that, um, yeah, by faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in foreign land, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For he was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. Okay, again, in, in verse 10 and 15 and chapter 13, verse 14, everywhere it is written that the Old Testament, I mean, I mean uh, 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 saints, the Old Testament people, they were also waiting for that, to see that, to get that foundation of uh, the new Jerusalem, especially Abraham. So this, morning, this evening, let us also, I mean, summit us with the mighty hand of God and say, Lord, we are also waiting for that. We are also waiting for that. Oh, Lord, I mean, we are not waiting 
for to, to see any any present Jerusalem or any other other I mean material things of this world, but we are looking forward for the new Jerusalem which is coming on. Hallelujah. So let us pray for that. I mean, Namukum Adivendi Pradesh or Katrikam, a Pudya Rishila Namuku went very put on some my Hallelujah, Adana Namka Katrika, Kartam and the Varivina Katrikam, Adani Sheshamundaga and Pogana and New Jerusalem. And in Greek keep it a situation like Namuku Pogan and Namka Katrikam. Let us all summit us with the mighty hand of God. The thing is. I mean, what is our expectation and what we are expecting and, and what will we will be in eternity and God's presence will be with us. Hallelujah. And God will be with us as a tabernacle. And he is going to be with us just like an Emmanuel. Hallelujah. So let us pray for that. Let us have that confidence that I will be there in eternity. We'll be studying many things about the New Jerusalem in the next class. But today, I mean, we are going to close this class, uh, I mean, with a word of prayer. Let us all, I mean, I mean, uh, I mean close our eyes in the presence of God. And I would request uh, if, uh, I mean, Sam is okay, you can, you can pray for, I mean,